the Florida Writer Podcast, a discussion about writing and other things. Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Florida Writer Podcast with your host, Allison Nissen. And today I am lucky enough to be with author Anne Brooks. Anne, could you give us a 60 second elevator pitch about who you are and what you write? Thank you. Yes, I am a writer and I typically write psychological thrillers, but this book is my first breakout book into um, young adult fantasy. Young adult fantasy. Wow. What was your inspiration? So actually my inspiration came from a third grade class I taught a few years ago. They learned about my first publication, A Lost Woman, which is an adult women's fiction novel. And my students really wanted to read it, and it was not appropriate for them to read. So they started begging me if I would write a book that they could read. And it kind of morphed into this idea, why don't we write a book together? So throughout the following year, we set up a storyline, plot, they picked characters, and it really became this phenomenal writing lesson that we did all together throughout the year. And by the end of the year, when they moved on, we had just all become so enthralled with the book and passionate about the book that they really wanted something in their hands that they could read a full story about with their names in it. So the next, the following year, we shut down for COVID and I was given the opportunity to really sit down and write the book using kind of all the, all the lessons that we had done the previous year in uh, writing. How fun. Is this something you would like to continue doing? Yes, I really enjoyed writing this book. It was very different from my first novel. And I enjoyed writing about werewolves. It was definitely out of my comfort zone. And I had to scale my writing back a lot to make sure that I wasn't um, taking the story too far. The story is about friendship. And these are third graders. So as I'm writing this story, it's becoming a love story, but I'm really kind of having to hold that back because it was it was always to see about friendship and how a friendship can create this bond that kind of oversees prejudice and stereotypes at the end of the day, using that kind of werewolf versus the other main character is innately meant to kill werewolves. So, but yet they develop a friendship together. So with it being a young adult novel, I really had to kind of scale back and watch how far I took their relationship. But I'm hoping that this book can become part of a series. The thought with the class was they always, they've read this book and they, they want more now. They're constantly sending me messages about their character and what where they want to go in the next book. So I'm already feeling the pressure to write, to keep writing this series. So if it's young adult and you've worked with a third grade class, obviously there's going to be parts that are a little above their head. Yes. <laughs> but so I was so impressed by their thought process and um, what their characters could do really, really improved their creative writing skills. And it was impressive to watch them and to see where they wanted to take their plots. At, at the end of the day, I wrote the story with the, the ideas that they gave me, but I think they've all been very happy with where each of their characters were taken. So how many characters are there? So there were 17 kids in the class. And so throughout the book, you meet at least those 17 characters. There are a couple extra characters. So I had to steal some other names from students that had learned that I was writing the book. And they were like, well, can you put my name in there too? So it just became, well, I've got this character. They need a name. Do you want it? And they were like, yes, I do. So, but every name in that book is a student I've taught at some point. And then I also used the teacher's name. That was the full-time teacher that year that I worked with. Is it a classroom setting for the, for the novel? There is a portion where they are at school because school is kind of where a lot of these characters got introduced to each other. But at the end of the day, she, a lot of it really takes place at her home in uh, rural Georgia. All right, I'm gonna ask another one. The main character or characters, are they modeled after students as well? Like were other students jealous that somebody might've gotten more uh, <laughs> writing time than the others? <laughs> you know, it was funny. Some of them really wanted to be 
main parts in the book and some of them were very shy about it and they picked very they were like I just want to be a backup character I don't want to be the main character the main character Ellie was the student who really kind of propelled the the whole start of this book she really wanted to read the book she said well I said well let's write a book she's like let's do this uh she was the one that um when I came up with ideas of like let's have this idea for a story and this idea which one would you prefer me to write about she picked the one with werewolves and then got the whole class excited about it so she was really the student that brought it all to life and got the kids excited about it so she was always going to kind of be that main character because she was the most into it and then her the werewolf that becomes her best friend Khalil he that was many different people in the class uh, someone would want to be him and then they wouldn't want to be him and then another person would take it on so it finally landed on Khalil's shoulders and he he took that but they were all very nervous about being the main characters <laughs> I think that's awesome tell me about this the transition from writing psychological thrillers to writing a werewolf there's <laughs> got to be a big shift in your thinking and if you're not typically a fantasy writer, do you understand where werewolves? Is there a certain rule that they have that that you know? I mean, if they get wet, do they melt? Or I, I don't <laughs> read werewolf stories, so there was actually a lot of googling involved and a lot of rewatching like shows and reading some of the old books about werewolves. But I really kind of went old school and deviled into what was the original thought behind werewolves where did werewolves come from um and I added that kind of into the story all that knowledge that I learned um the main character reads this book and she kind of learns this knowledge too from it when she's in the story but it was a big change a lost woman that was very much a cathartic right like it was about abuse it was about a mother-daughter relationship the cycle of violence that I witnessed when I worked in social work so it was a very cathartic right and I felt like once I got all that out with a lost woman, then I would open up to like just writing for fun, just like enjoy, like I really enjoyed uh, the blood inside me because it was such a fun write and it was easy. It wasn't hard. I wasn't bawling on and like remembering these horrible things that happened um, to people that I knew it was, it was just fun to write. And it was, it's all about friendship and high school. And so it really, it really took me back to when I was younger, living the older, for the old days. <laughs> Well, it sounds like it was a fun process. So what is it that you like about the writing process? So the writing process for me is all consuming. I have ADHD and I typically have a hard time focusing on one thing and, and staying on a track longer than a few minutes <laughs> like kids are in school. And so writing, though, activates every component of my brain. So I really enjoy it because I just, I can focus on it and nothing breaks that focus. And I'm excited the whole time. I always find like writing a book is like a relationship. You know, when you're writing the book, it's new, it's exciting. You don't know what's going to happen next. Cause really sometimes when I'm writing stuff comes up and I'm like, Oh, that would be perfect to happen next. And I, I never even thought about that initially. So it's kind of that like new relationship, getting to know the book and getting to know the story and then you kind of fall into that tireless work of editing and querying where you question yourself, is this really, is this really what I want to do? Is this really, is this, is this going to go anywhere? What, what, what's going to happen with this book? Or you are in that relationship, that kind of make or break moment. And then I found when I published my first book that that's when that rejuvenated, long lasting love kind of fell into place with that book. So I always, I always get really excited about initially writing the book because to me, that's one of the most fun parts. So you sent out queries for your or queries, query, I can't say that word very well, can I? You sent out queries for your uh, first book. Did you do the same with the second? No. So unfortunately, by the time I wrote this book and got it finished, the kids were graduating fifth grade. So I was about four weeks out from them leaving the halls of this school and me never being able to get in contact with them again. And I could not fail them. I could not be this teacher that said she was going to write a book and then completely failed them and never did it for them. So I ended up finding a publisher, um, Ingram Spark. It's a print on demand company that would just print the book. So I just, I edited this book. I had one beta reader who was my aunt who read it. 
I did all the grammatical checks. So, you know, touch and go there. But <laughs> um, I had to get it out to them. I had to just get the book in hand and, and put it in their hands for graduation. And it came with a couple days to spare. And it was their big, we had a big graduation party for them. And I passed the book out. And it was, it was, it was such an amazing, amazing moment to have with them. And I felt a lot of pride for them, but also for myself. So I was like, I got it done. <laughs> But I would have liked for it to have found like a home, a publishing home, but I, j- I did not have the time. So you want to continue and, and write some more in this particular series. Are you going to go back to psychological thrillers? Are you going to try to find another genre? So I actually have already completed another psychological thriller. It's called A Girl in the Water, and it's a murder mystery slash romance, because as you're solving the murder of a, of a person in the book, you're also going back in time in that person's life to a love story that they had in their teenage years. And so it, and there's a, there's a, um, a stalkerist psychological component to that. And then at the end of the day, you're kind of, I loved how in my first book, you were left thinking, wait, what just happened? Cause what you thought you knew was not what you knew. It was very sixth sense, you know? And so I love that about writing. So with a girl in the water, I, I put that back into there where you get to the end and you're like, wait, that's what was going on the whole time. And so you want to go reread the whole thing with that different perspective. But I, I've written that and I'm hoping to, I've done directly to publishing. I got a publisher through a pit mat event on Twitter. And then I did self-publishing, which worked out really well for this particular book because it's what I needed. For a girl in the water, I really am hoping to find an agent and find kind of a long-term home where I can continue with the blood, the blood inside me, and I can continue to write psychological thrillers as well. I love them both, so I don't want to give up either one. <laughs> what do people think when you tell them that you're a writer? They actually initially think I write children's books because I'm an elementary teacher, and they are very surprised to learn that I write that I wrote an adult um, women's fiction novel, they were a little less surprised with the blood inside me because they were like, oh yeah, for your students. And so um, they're, they're always very surprised. They didn't, and they always say, where do you find the time? And I'm like, it is very hard to find the time. <laughs> but um, I just, I steal any moments I can with my kids getting older and a little bit more independent. I can um, have them doing stuff together while I can also be writing. So what is your process for writing? My process for writing this particular book was very different than my norm because I wrote it in, con- you know, in conjunction with as with the material that I would received the year before working with the students and their ideas. So I really was just kind of writing that on the side in the background for them. Typically, my my writing process is to sit down, sequester myself for a week or however long anybody will give me and watch my children and just bullet write the book. I really follow Stephen King's on writing with just you can't read a book that's not on paper. So just getting it written and getting it done is really where I sit down and I just give it all my focus for as long as I can start to finish. And then I tirelessly edit in the middle of the night for for years. <laughs> well, that's tough, but makes it challenging when you can only steal moments. Yes, yes. And summer is typically when I have more time, but I unfortunately learned this past summer that was my kids being older, they not they can do a lot of stuff on their own at the house, but they don't really want to sit at the house every day. They want to go out, they want to do stuff. Um, our big thing this summer was mommy watch me. And I was like, I'm not watching you. <laughs> I was like, I'm, mommy's trying to work. So um, I learned this summer that it, my summers are getting a little bit more demanding than they used to be. So I'm hoping to um, try to, schedule my next summer or my years a little bit better to give myself some more off time so I can focus on the writing. Yeah. Once the children start to get a little bit older, that middle, uh, when they get to the point where they're independent, not necessarily even doing the watch me anymore, they're, they just need to be watched <laughs> yeah. and they want to go places. Take me to my friends, take me to the mall, yeah. take me to the pool. And, and forever you're just driving back and forth. And the, the mom taxi thing is real. Yes, my big my kids fell in love with bowling this summer. And so 
I promised him, I said, okay, I will take you bowling, but I'm not going to bowl. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to, I'm going to work. Don't ask me to watch you. Don't ask me to play bowl with you. I'm going to sit here and, and work, but you can bowl the whole time I'm working. And as long as we don't bother each other, I'll let you bowl all day. <laughs> well, at least there's an activity that they can do that's not in front of the screens. That was our big thing. You know, it's hard because if I put them in front of a screen, I get that time, that uninterrupted time. So I have to be so careful because I can lose myself in writing for hours. And then all of a sudden, my husband's walking through the door and he's like, so has anybody moved at all today? And I'm like, oh, my bad. <laughs> we all got very caught up doing our favorite thing. <laughs> my kids would, my kids would come interrupt me and say, are we going to eat dinner today? And I'd be like, Oh, oops. And then I would try to throw something yeah. together, but I'm a little more mindful now than I used to be. Of course, yeah. my kids are adults, so I don't really have to worry about it. Uh, they learned very early how to cook. Let's put it that way. Yes. I actually learned DoorDash <laughs> and I was like, Oh, wait a minute. There's this thing that will deliver food for us. Yes. Now, if they could just deliver edits to us, that would be really handy. That would, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Editor to your door. Could you just proofread these 10 pages for me? Yeah. <laughs> well, Ann Brooks, this has been a, a very enjoyable interview. Can you tell me how people can find you? Yes, I have a website, annbrooksauthor.com, and I am also on Instagram under Ann Brooks Author, and my Twitter handle is at ann-brooks32, so, and you can get to all that from my website as well, and I have a Facebook page, Ann Brooks. <laughs> Very good. Are you ready to switch to our rapid fire questions? Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they're uh, not that complicated. Uh, <laughs> uh yes. <laughs> Is cereal soup? Why or why not? No, because I eat mine dry. What is the craziest name you've ever heard? Oh, I've heard a lot of names as a teacher. Um, I think. A BC was probably the craziest and it's spelled ABC. Nice. Yeah. I <laughs> was a camp counselor many, many, many years ago. And I had a camper named Candace Barr. I just loved that one. And so when I became a, a young adult and would go out, I would adopt that name. And that would be my, my name instead of giving somebody my real name. And our final question. Oh, what's invisible? but you wish people could see. Oh, gosh. Can I say um, disability? Like, you know, uh, I think sometimes, especially working with kids with disabilities, um, you don't outwardly see that someone is autistic or that someone has um, something else going on emotionally inside them. And so if there was a way for people to kind of just see that as they walked by and say, okay, let's give this person space or let's give them a little bit more understanding. I think that sounds like an interesting book to read. Oh, <laughs> well, uh, you know, you have like a green aura or a blue aura. I like that. Yes. Well, feel free to use me as your inspiration. There you go. I will get started on that. <laughs> Ann Brooks, I'm so glad you've been able to stop by. Yes. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I love talking to you. You have been listening to another edition of the Florida Writer Podcast with your host, Allison Nissen. Allison out. Boom. We're all done. Yay. <laughs> Ann Brooks grew up in a small town off the Gulf Coast of Florida where she cultivated a passion for the water. She completed her bachelor's in psychology at the University of Florida and worked in social work for a few years before making a career change to elementary education. You can find her on social media at Facebook and Brooks, Twitter and underscore Brooks 32 and Instagram and Brooks author. For more information about the Florida Writers Association, visit us at floridawriters.org. Until next time.